hey, I'm super happy that you're here to hang out with me for a bit. And I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone subscribed to my channel so far. We managed to hit the 2000 subscriber mark. And I know for some people that might not be um, that big of a deal, but for me, it means a lot. So thank you very much for that. So there are many ways to structure your data science projects, but I'm gonna tell you the way I do it after more than 15 years of experience as a software engineer. Starting a new project can sometimes be intimidating. Uh, it is the same as an artist sitting in front of a blank canvas or a writer that tries to come up with a super awesome story while staring at a blank page. You sometimes just don't know where and how to start. So let's do it together. But first, let's establish what I mean when I say a project. A project for me would be something like a recommendation engine for a specific online shop. And this includes everything from developing the recommendation model over serving recommendations as a web service to also um, having CI, CD and a data processing pipeline to be actually able to retrain the model as new data arrives. So all this code needed for those things needs to live somewhere. And I'm going to show you how I like to structure those things and tell you a bit about uh, why I think uh, this is a good way to do things along the way. As I said before, there are different ways to uh, structure your data science uh, based projects. Some teams like to have everything separated in their own version control repositories like the infrastructure, the backend, the frontend, if there is some other people even go there and uh, create one centralized um, version control repository for all their infrastructure code and then have separate repositories for their backends and frontends and so on. I'm not one of those. I actually don't really like uh, this approach. So um, I like to have uh, self-contained projects where everything that uh, is needed by the project is inside the same repository. So that approach, in my opinion, makes reasoning about the uh, project much easier because you don't need to yeah, care that much about external dependencies and things like that. And also when new people are joining the project, you can just tell them, okay, check out that one repository and you are basically good to go and can have a look at it and start to develop right away. And that person doesn't have to first look up like all other repositories that might be involved in getting this project uh, running somehow. So yeah, it's for me, it's just simpler and more concise. Everything that you need to, uh, to run that specific project or service is in one place. And yeah, for me, this is the way to go. So before we start with creating that folder structure, a quick shameless plug. Um, if you liked the video so far, please consider going completely insane and nuts on that uh, like button. Maybe also the subscribe button if you would like to. And maybe also leave a comment down below. That would really help me a lot. So with that being said, what would be my recommendation for a project structure or folder structure for that one repository that I like to have my stuff grouped in? So since uh, our project needs to be able to serve um, recommendations using a web service, as well as contain all the data science specific things like um, yeah, developing a machine learning model and a data processing pipeline, um, I like to start with two folders on the root level. Those folders would then be an app folder and an data folder. As you might uh, already guessed, the app folder will contain everything that is relevant for the app parts or the web service. And the data folder will contain everything that is uh, needed for the machine learning models or data processing pipelines and stuff like that. So let's have a more detailed look on the um, app folder since this one is a bit easier. So inside the app folder, I tend to create a folder for the source code. So this is the place where you would put your web service application in. Um, yeah, with whatever technology you are using, you could use like Spring Boot or Flask or whatever. So that code would go inside of the source folder. And then there is like another folder. The infrastructure. If I wrote that correct, let's hope. So, and in this folder, you will put all your infrastructure as code, code. 
Um, I recently uh, created a video about infrastructure as code and why you really should use it. So I will link the video somewhere like in one of those corners. Um, check it out if you haven't. Uh, I really recommend that. Yeah, those, this code will basically um, create all the um, infrastructure needed for, for setting up your web service. Like, I don't know, creating a virtual server or like an, uh, deploying your service to an uh, ECS cluster on AWS or whatever. So the code for deploying your web service will go into the infrastructure folder from the app. So let's jump back to the data folder. Inside the data folder, there are also some subfolders that I uh, used to put there. So one of those would be uh, infrastructure again. This time, everything related to the infrastructure of the data part will be living inside of this folder. For example, creating uh, things like Spark clusters, Kafka, um, maybe AWS lambdas that you need to trigger specific things or maybe yeah airflow whatever is needed to create those uh, the infrastructure for those data processing pipelines will live in this folder yeah and actually uh, you can use whatever infrastructure as code tool that you would look like uh, that you would like to use um, you just need to put it into this um, directory Another folder would be um, processing. Uh, the processing folder is a place where you would put um, all the code for your data transformations. For example, your uh, the, the code for your Spark jobs. Um, maybe you have some AWS lambdas that um, yeah, are used to transform data in, a, in one way or another, or you're using different tools. So every, so every piece of code that is about data transformation should live inside of uh, this uh, folder. And another one would be, would be machine learning. And inside of this folder, uh, I like to create also some more subfolders, uh, one for uh, data. So yeah, obviously you would put your data, training data, validation data, whatever data in this folder. Another folder would be, would be notebooks where you could put your Jupyter notebooks in uh, for experimentation and data exploration and whatever. So everything that you would like to keep, you can put in this folder. And then there is another folder, a folder for models. So this is the place for your machine learning models that you would like to then basically use in production. So usually you kind of like try things out in your Jupyter notebooks. And when you have some sort of a final state, then you would probably extract them into um, yeah, typical like Python scripts that uh, are then concise and are able then to train the model. And uh, yeah, and this uh, and this code you would then basically uh, use to deploy your machine learning models. So if we um, have a look at what we have so far, so so far the structure looks like this. So now that we have the basic folder structure in place, how do I like to set things up to make this all work together? So um, I like to use two CI/CD jobs, one for the app part and one for the data part. Why do I like to have two CI/CD jobs? Because I think that the life cycle or kind of like the development life cycle of those project uh, of those um, parts of the project is a different one. So um, whenever you change something on your web service, that doesn't mean that you need to kind of redeploy your data processing part, as well as when you uh, change something in your data processing part, that does not necessarily mean that you need to deploy your uh, web service. So we will create two different CI/CD jobs to uh, listen to only changes in the app folder and only changes in the data folder. To somehow make this visible in our folder structure, I will uh, put uh, some uh, mock 
CI/CD config file in there so that we can visualize it. CI/CD app cons. Let me put that into the app folder. And then we do touch. Right, so if we have a look at our folder structure now, now we have the um, CI/CD uh, config files in there, and usually there will be then steps uh, listed that the CI/CD tool uh, will use to deploy the respective uh, part or service. Um, yeah, usually it's running the infrastructure as code code. And while we are uh, into that, I also like to uh, place some README files. So um, I like to place. Um, I like to place a readme uh, file for the app part that describes how to uh, run the service maybe locally or how to uh, run it for development purposes, how to um, yeah, maybe debug it or things like that to help other developers and the team um, to get started with it. Um, the same applies for the data part. There are also like two put an uh, readme file. And in this case, I would usually put something in there like a diagram of the data processing pipeline so that new people know what's going on throughout the pipeline. And also things like, as I, like I mentioned before, uh, like debugging instructions, how to run things locally and things like that. And then, of course, I also uh, like to place a, a readme file on the top level so that when you view your project in, for example, uh, GitHub or whatever, that um, yeah, there is some information for your fellow colleagues so that they know basically what the service is all about. So, and with that, we have basically this structure and yeah, it served me quite well in the past and I really liked structuring things like that. And yeah, I hope you got some uh, value out of it. If so, it would be super awesome if you would consider going completely insane on that like button. And yeah, so far, see you in the next video. Bye.